Hi, my name is Artash Nath. Hi, my name is Arushi Nath. Yeah, so um, today we're going to present to you one of our latest projects. It's called Swinging to Stability, basically how quadruple pendulums can be used to help discover gravitational waves in the LIGO, the Light Inferometer Gravitational Observatory. So also this, like, this um, project was inspired by a talk by Rainer Ruiz. So actually this talk was given at the Ontario Science Center right here uh, last year, six months ago, thanks. Yes, as part of the Great Conversations lecture series. And Rainer Ruiz is also a Nobel Prize winner in physics of 2017. So we went back to our government and said, we need, we've got an instrument that's working, but we didn't see anything. We'd like to make it better. And what we did, I won't go into all the reasons, but we improved the isolation from the ground noise. And we built something called Advanced LIGO. And Advanced LIGO has some very fancy things in it. It hangs, for example, the Earth is attached to these springs up here. And the one way, to, here's that mirror, which is the suspended mirror. And each one of these is a pendulum. That's another pendulum, another pendulum, another pendulum. You can go home and build this for yourself. Just take a, a cup, hang it by, hang it by a, a thread, and, and hold it in your hand up here. And you'll notice the following thing. At low frequencies, and a pendulum, the top, which is the ground, moves along with, they move together, the, the, the mirror and the, move together with the motion of the ground. But if you move this very quickly, this thing doesn't move at all. In other words, it moves a little, but very little. And that's the idea of doing isolation. All right, so I'm going to start off with uh, gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are distortions in the fabric of space and time. So these can be caused by major, um, graf major events in the universe. Um, for example, merger of black holes, or merger of neutron stars, or supernovae, or even when um, the birth of the universe in the Big Bang. So now, when the, how do these, um, how can we measure these gravitational waves from Earth? For this, it's the exper we're using the LIGO, as I said before, the Light Inferometer Gravitational Observatory. Basically, it has an L-shaped kind of view, as you can see here. And when a gravitational wave hits the Earth, one of the arms of the L will contract and the other arm will expand. So one of the key concepts of how the LIGO works is light. So let's say I had, for example, a laser, and I bounce it across the room. No matter how I bounce it, how many times I do it, the time it'll take for it to go there and come back will remain the same. So. To measure how much are these arms shrinking or expanding, we bounce lasers through these arms. So these two lasers reflect across the mirrors and meet together and cancel each other out. out. So when there's no gravitational waves, we're not get detecting any, any light because the two, the two lasers are canceling themselves out. <laughs> Um, and by the way, these arms are four kilometers each. We need to have them a large distance because gravitational waves, when they hit the Earth, they only change the diameter of the Earth by the width of like three atoms, which is very difficult to measure. And this will be even less when we have the LIGO here with only four, four kilometers arms. <laughs> now, these gravitational waves tend to come at a frequency of uh, 10 to several hundred hertz. Now, there are many other things that could affect these measurements that you're doing in the LIGO. For example, let's say you're walking next to the observatory, or a train's passing, or any type of seismic activity like tidal waves, um, tides, um, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. All these come at a, a similar frequency as these gravitational waves do. So for LIGO to work, we have to find a way to isolate these seismic vibrations. And then we can accurately measure if there's any gravitational waves coming and not confuse them with any other vibration. OK. Now, um, actually, as I was talking before, uh, at the beginning of the lecture, Reynor Reese's talk, um, he, was talking, he was talking about um, 
pendulums and how they were used inside the LIGO. And the key concept was, let's say I take this small pendulum I have, a thread with a bolt at the end, and I start swinging it slowly. As you can see, the bolt at the end is moving pretty fast. But if I increase the rate at which I'm vibrating at, here, you can see the bolt is barely moving. So, yes, yeah, so these kinds of vibrations that are caused by the seismic activity, they're at a certain frequency, which this mass will not actually move that much, or will move less than at the top of the pendulum. So, the LIGO uses a stacked pendulum, four stacked pendulums, which is called a quadruple pendulum. Each, pen, each pendulum acts as one of this pendulum, and each one of them will reduce the amount of vibration until it reaches the fourth pendulum, in which we want to have the least possible vibrations. All right, so Rainer Reese, in his lecture, he explained this concept and told everyone, why don't you try this out? So that's exactly what we wanted to do. So we decided to do an experiment and test out if this quadruple pendulum actually works. Yeah, so how did we make the pendulum? First, I attached four washers together and I attached a, a motor controller to it, to each of the washers, so called a micro bit, so it can detect the acceleration of each of the washers using a programming language called Python, so it can see how what's the difference in between the speed of all the washers. And the best part about the micro bits is that it's wireless, so I don't need to connect the transmitters to the receivers. They, it's wireless. Yeah, these micro bits will measure the horizontal vibration on each of the pendulums and will relay it wirelessly to our laptop, as she said. And oh, in addition, we also have a micro bit, basically accelerometer, on the top of the pendulum just to measure the vibration that's actually being caused before getting reduced by the pendulum. And so we need to test this out. So we wanted to simulate three different types of frequencies um, on our model of a pendulum, which actually you can see right here. So the first thing we did is we took a back massager, maybe some of you have heard of it, and um, this we placed it on top of our metal grating here. And back massagers, they tend to have lower frequencies. So the second tool we used to um, try to test this out was a cordless drill. So just a drill run on battery, which has a higher, uh, higher, like let's say a medium frequency. And last of all, we used a corded drill, which had the maximum amount of frequency. So yes, yeah, so for each of these different tools, we repeated the experiment thrice to get accurate data. And each of them was run for at least 60 seconds. So now I'm gonna bring you the, the, um, the experiment. So the first thing we did, as I said, was run a back, back massager in it. And, but before that, we also, of course, measured the, get the, uh, got the baseline data for uh, the pendulums to see the before and then the after. So as you can see, most of these graphs are pretty stable because the, pe the pendulum was just not moving. Let's, we didn't apply any vibrations to it. There are just some small kinks due to the small rotation of these, um, of these circles, um, these weights basically, and some, some small error inside the measurements of the accelerometer. So then after we applied this back, uh, the back massager, the top, the top graph was the graph that we placed on top right here. So this vibration you can see, we got this graph. So this is an increase from this one. You can see all the noise that's getting got from the uh, massager. And slowly, on the first pendulum, you can not really see too many differences apart from some kinks. And at the last graph, at the fourth pendulum, at the end of the pendulum, there's barely any change. So 
we can see that um, we were able to cushion the vibration from up here and up here to the bottom of the pendulum. So then the second experiment was using a cord, cordless drill and we ran the cordless drill against this. You can see again the same before and after vibration is much more compared to the, pre the previous ones but Pendulum 1, it, it, it still has a lot of vibrations. Pendulum 2, it gets less. And eventually, at Pendulum 4, again, there's barely any vibrations. And last of all, the quarter drill. So um, we have, um, again, a lot of vibration up here. And at the bottom, um, very little, almost no vibrations. Um, and actually to measure the change in vibration across the, the pendulum, we made a transfer function. This is basically how much is the pendulum moving divided by how much the top of the pendulum was moving or the pendulum before it was moving. So here's our graph. So the blue dots you can see is the transfer function for the back massager with the low frequency. And at first it, as you can see, does not really cushion the vibrations as efficiently as the two others, the orange cordless drill and the gray corded drill. But, and um, eventually though, all of them, the first, the two of them, the corded drill and cordless drill with the higher frequencies result in, um, at the end, almost no need to really cushion it anymore because three pendulums or two pendulums would be enough. But for the last one, the low frequency, it takes more time to try to cushion these vibrations. But at the end, we all have a relatively low transfer function, which means this worked pretty efficiently. So our conclusion, our conclusion is that um, the more number of pendulum systems you're going to put, let's say you put a fifth one or sixth one, the the more it'll, uh, the more efficiently it'll work, as in it'll be able to decrease more vibrations and um yeah and also they're more effective for higher frequencies as we saw in the before graph and um pendulums were first studied by galileo and then um there were the the theory of gravitational waves was got by einstein um also by the way this project um i showed it at the toronto science fair and i got a silver medal for it um, this is me at the Toronto Science Fair with the same experiment. Um, now we're also going to give a small demo of the actual sensor. So you'll be able to see the graphs. So we have two sensors only this time, one at the bottom of the pendulum and one at the first pendulum. And we're going to run these two graphs on these laptops. So the graph you're seeing here represents the lowest pendulum. And the graph you're seeing here is the pendulum number one here. So um, now let's say I apply a slight vibration. Now on the first computer, we're going at um, plus minus 250 with the graph. Uh, you can't see the numbers from here, but it's plus minus 250. On the other hand, in the other graph, which represents the movement of the lowest pendulum, we have a plus minus of 15. And you can also visually see that the lowest pendulum is vibrating the least. Yep. The top one moves is moving the most in this case. Yeah, uh, there we go. Um, oh, also we emailed um, a description of this project that we made to Rainer Rees to show him that we actually went home and did this project. Um, here's the email he sent us. So he appreciated us doing this project to actually test it out on our own. And thank you.
Questions? Oh, lots of questions. Thing. Is that working? Yes. Um, it looks to me like your pendulum lengths are all the same. Is yes. that deliberate? Yes. And were the lengths in the actual quadrupole system at LIGO also the same length? All right. Yeah, good question. So let me just get to the slide with that pendulum. Oh, there we go. So um, this is the LIGO's actual quadrupole pendulum here. So uh, yes, you can see in this diagram, the distance between the first two are shorter, while this one is a bit longer. So different lengths of pendulum can be used to stop different types of vibration. For example, if I take a longer pendulum and I will move it a little, as I did before, it's moving, but just a little bit more, and this barely moves. Let's say I make a shorter length. It'll take a bit more frequency of vibration to get it to stop moving. So we have to adapt these pendulums to specifically cushion the seismic vibrations. So this length is as such, so it's best suited for higher level vibrations as caused by seismic activity. Was there a statistical difference if you altered the weight of the masses between the spacers? Right there you have it as on the LIGO, it's uh, pendulums are 20 kilograms and the two lower masses are 40 kilograms. Was yeah. there any statistical differences if you altered those masses? And second question is, where can I buy a micro bit? Ha. Huh. Okay, um, answering your first question first. Um, yes, so um, as we know, if, it, if a mass is heavier, it's difficulter to move, so um, a heavier weight will, um, will move less if we vibrate it, but we never actually did try to change the weight on the pendulums, um, but yes, it would be interesting to try that. Yes, and the microbits, um, actually they're from, um, well, we actually got them as part of, um, we applied for uh, 10 free microbits, we got them, but they're not a product of Canada. Um, I don't actually know you can get them, but there's a site, BBC Microbit, dot BBC Microbit. Yeah, all you have to do is search BBC Microbit, and you'll get a website where you can buy them. Thanks. Thanks. All set then, thank you very much for your presentation.